Hi, today we're looking at solid edge sensors and variable rules. Alright, so we're going to apply some knowledge and some intelligence to our geometry. So for future changes, uh, if somebody doesn't know the product very well, can come in and make changes without actually having to have know too much about the actual details. Alright, because we're going to actually apply some geometry and we're going to actually apply this geometry as sheet metal. Alright, let's go ahead and get a tab going and we can start applying some rules to it. Alright, let's get into the material first off. Let's just make this stainless. Let's give it a thickness. Uh, let's go 0 0.065. That'll work. Alright, so we have our tab feature. And uh, let's give it a couple dimensions. Alright, so let's go ahead and give it a length and a width to work with. Alright, so here is my length. Let's go ahead and make that 9. And you know what? For the use of variable table rules, dimensions have to be locked. So by locking it, uh, turning it to a driving dimension, and let's go ahead and make sure that it moves symmetric for me from here on out. And uh, there's my width. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for the length. Make this 18. Go and same thing locked. All right, so there is our two dimensions driving the shape of our profile. So let's take a look at these two dimensions in our variable table. All right, uh, I do have something turned on currently. I have uh, my uh, my filters turned on. Let's see. So let me go ahead and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and show both. All right. So this is the information that you would normally see with your geometry, uh, but I want to go through and give this uh, my values so I'm going to go ahead and say you know what uh, let's just make these mine all right so let's go ahead and call this uh, again width and length is this uh, actually positively needed? No. Uh, you know, I just like going in and giving it something that I would recognize as the variables that I'm working with. Uh, if you ever want to see those variables, any given time, you can always right click on the, and say show all formulas, which is width equals 9, or just show the names of the values that equate to the variable table. Most people typically leave it as just values. Alright, there we go. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, give it a uh, some intelligence to this actual link. I'm going to go to my variable rule editor. Alright, so let's say on this one that this part can be, um, say, five different uh, values. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and start with 12. And what I'm doing is giving it a discrete list. So I'm going to say 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. All right, so once I say OK, you'll notice what happens once I pick that dimension. The box that typically you would go in and fill out to uh, give it a particular value now has my discrete list in it. All right, so this can be 12, 14, 16, or 18. You know, you can just go ahead and quickly toggle through and see the changes immediately happen as I change the size and shape. All right, let's do another one on the width. Alright, so let's go ahead and variable rule editor. Alright, let's say this one can be anywhere between 10 inches and 2 inches. That should work. So we're going to go ahead and say, you know what, let's limit the value. Instead of doing the discrete list, we have a min-max option. Alright, so let's go with uh, greater than or equal to, and as I said, uh, greater than 2, or less than or equal to, and 10 is the value. I'll say okay. All right, so I just made a little intelligence in there, and uh, it really, there, again, there is no toggle to to grab from, so it's something I have to type in. So I can go ahead and make this two inches. If I come back and say, you know what, somebody needs to say that doesn't quite fit. Let's make that one and three quarter. Well, by the rule I applied to this, this has to be between two and ten. So there's my first rule that I applied. All right, so let's go ahead and make this a little bit wider again. number locks on so I can actually 
type that value. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the variable table out. The rest of these that I'm going to create are from my sensors. All right. These can be created whether you're in part or sheet metal. Uh, we have sensors in either environment, uh, and, and they're pretty much the same. Uh, there's a couple different ones in sheet metal that you don't get in the part environment. Uh, we actually have a specific sheet metal sensor, uh, which I will just go ahead and show you. It, it's basically a, a, a pre pre defined set of rules that you can apply to a piece of geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and say this, and of course you notice we have predefined sensors. Alright, we have uh, cutouts to hole sensors, cuts to edge sensors, um, holes to hole sensors. So when you want a hole will impede on another hole, it'll pop up some warnings. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and skip this one because it's predefined. Let's show you how to set these up from scratch. Alright, so let's go ahead with a minimum uh, distance sensor. Alright. So I can go ahead and define a piece of, uh, you know, whether, again, this is a protrusion or a cutout or some other kind of features. I can use these type of things to define a minimum distance. All right, so I need to go ahead and create a feature here. There again, and let's cut this out. <laughs> put the sketch on the bottom. That's what I did. I was trying to push it the wrong direction. User error. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a dis uh, dimension. Let's see, 1.5. There we go. And let's give it actual profile. Some size as well. Uh, on these, again, uh, you can either lock your dimensions from the Pathfinder, or you can pick them and lock them. So I'm going to apply a formula between these two, and to uh, do that requires you to actually lock the dimensions. So as you can see, I can actually pick from the Pathfinder and lock and unlock various dimensions. And then let's go ahead and make sure these are all locked. Uh, and to apply a formula, simply just right-clicking. Say an edit formula, and I want to go ahead and say, yep, these two are always going to be the same. All right, so uh, we have the blue, which are driving dimensions. We have red or dri uh, blue, which are driven dimensions. Red or are driving, and we have this purple text with red dimensions, which basically means it's being driven by a formula. Uh, I showed this a while ago. Um, you know, again, we can go through and say show all uh, formulas, and this will give you the nice little linear is a uh, four equals linear. So it tells you which dimension that it's actually being tied to. So that way you can quickly see which uh, dimensions are tied together. All right. Now that those are tied together, again we have our minimum distance. So we're going to go say, you know what, let's go with uh, key points. All right, let's go ahead and say this edge to this edge, of course, it gives us a, a, a little dash line here showing that's, that's the normal distance that we want to go. And uh, go ahead and Oops. go ahead and accept that. All right, we'll sense this and we'll call this uh, cut to edge. All right, so let's go ahead and say current value is 1.5. You can see up here that's the actual variable it's, it's uh, corresponding with. And we're going to say less than, or we have some things equal to, greater than. You know what, let's say less than the actual value. Uh, so let's say sensor range 1 to 2. Actually, 3. All right, right now, and the threshold. Let's go ahead and there we go. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pin my sensor down so we can see the exact point of time. All right, so as I start going through and making a change to this, and as soon as I get past the 1.5, which was my threshold, you can see I can scroll out and we know no problem. But once I get to a certain distance, which is 3 inches, it should pop up with an exclamation immediately saying, uh, actually, sorry, it's, <laughs> it's less than. So again, if I try to go to 1, we immediately get an exclamation. And so cut to edge has been violated. Click for more information. I click this. It takes me over to my cut to edge command. And I can see, hey, we're within it. If I hover over it, current value is not in range. And I can see what the value is. Let's go ahead and smooth that back to 1.5. Exclamation point goes away. And we're all good. All right. So that is one sensor. And, of course, we can apply multiple sensors. Let's say this particular part possibly has uh, some airflow. All right, maybe we have a blower motor that attaches to this particular cutout. All right, and what we're going to need to do is uh, calculate airflow. All right, so how much airflow can we get through this uh, area right here? So what we're going to do is a surface area sensor. All right. So we have two options, and we have the positive area and, of course, the negative area. The negative area would be an actual hole. I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, let's go ahead and get that. All right, we'll call this airflow. All right, let's go ahead and give, this is in actually square inches, which is fine uh, for this. Uh, let's go ahead and say it's, if it's going to be less than or, you know, again, between some other. So we're going to say less than and we'll give it a range we're, we're again we're at 2.25 uh, uh, square inches so we'll say 1 and 6 All right, threshold let's go ahead and make this So currently, current value is not in range. All right. So as I start going through, let me put a dimension to the edge here. Did not do that while we go. Let's do that now. Go ahead and drive it the other direction. Let's go ahead and lock that. And let's make that. Start doing that immediately again. Airflow sensor pops up. Airflow has been in violation. Click for more information. All right. So again, we have. That's a quick way to uh, quickly quickly validate uh, airflow. So again, uh, this works great with uh, louvers. keep doing that backwards. It actually should be greater than. Alright, because we're looking for we don't want to go too small airflow. Too too large obviously is not going to be an issue. So um, that is well within range. And we're all good to go. Alright. Let's see. We also have variable sensors. So if I go to the variable sensor, this uh, this is kind of the old school way of actually creating what we did a second ago with the width and length. Uh, but we have a few more options uh, other than what we have in the variable table. Uh, we do we can do not between, uh, you know, obviously between a certain distance, equal to, greater than. So we do have a few other options uh, that is not available here. Again, if I go back to the actual variable table. Again, we, we have the uh, min-max, greater than, equal to, greater than, none. So we don't have the between or 
not equal to, so, you know, we do have some limitations there, uh, but for the most part, it's what most people need just from the variable table. Uh, if they do need more complicated uh, variable sensors, we can go right to sensors. And if you are adept at programming, all right, this is the one for you. Custom sensors. All right, so first off, it's going. you're going to have to use C sharp or C plus to go out there and make a sensor. Uh, again, that's quite simple to do. We have a we have a customizable program, uh, Solid Edge. Uh, there's actually a programmer guide right here. So programming with Solid Edge will take you to a programmer's guide. It shows you a lot of the neat APIs that are uh, hooked for a Solid Edge to be linked with your program. All right. So we did the surface area sensor. We talked about sheet metal sensor. Uh, variable sensor and of course uh, minimum distance sensor. Uh, let me open up part environment and here we go. Alright, so you notice we just don't have the sheet metal sensor but we do have all the same styles of geometry that we can make. Variables, holes to an edge or surface area I should say or um, minimum distance. All right, we'd like to thank you for uh, taking a look at some of the intelligence uh, we can build into solid edge models uh, through sensors and through variable table rules. Uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact us at Swoosh. And uh, thank you very much.